episode, we will be asking the question, and it is the million dollar question, why is it so hard to lose weight? You have been at this for 30 years, helping patients and clients, and I'm sure you have heard this question over and over. So Dr. Benz, let me start with you. We know we need to eat healthy. We know the basics. Why is it so hard to change our behavior? Many reasons, and one of them is food is good. We, we love food. We celebrate with food. Um, food is a comfort, and also in America, food is very easy to get. You can just punch on your phone and have anything delivered to you within 10 or 15 minutes. So it's readily available, and you know, our lives are very busy, and many of us eat out in restaurants, and uh, it's just, um, we live in a society that has been called an obesogenic society, and what that means is that our lifestyle can contribute to obesity. So if we don't have some type of a plan, it's very easy to gain weight. Do we eat too much, or are we eating the wrong things? Everything has become supersized in our country, and we've also gotten into everything is bigger and better. So let's improve this version of a recipe by adding more fat, um, more sugar. Let's make it better and bigger. So that's a lot of it. Um, food choices, because the comfort foods that we choose cause that increase in the endorphins that make us feel good momentarily. Those are the things we're gonna you know, strive for, and they taste so good. Um, high fat, greasy foods are um, full of flavor because flavor, flavor compounds are fat soluble. So they dissolve in that fat and just make it taste so good. I also, oh, no, no that's ahead, okay. I was also going to add on to what Dr. Coker had said is that you had asked the question, where did we go wrong? And I think a lot um, of what happens in America is that we're mindlessly eating. If you've traveled to other countries, you see that they take the time. They carve out a siesta or a two hour lunch break and really appreciate the people and the food. Where we're mindlessly munching as we're running from one appointment to the next or looking at our phones, eating in the car, eating in the car at, our desk. at our desk or watching TV and multitasking and we're just so interested in accomplishing and, and busy that we're really losing our relationship with food and other people. And I think that's part of the struggle too in America is uh, the mindless eating versus the mindful eating that's occurring elsewhere. Well, that really hits to the heart what you ladies are talking about of why is it so hard to lose weight? Mm -hmm. Because it is an endless cycle of all of these things. Talk to me about the sabotage syndrome. What is that and how do we break through? Well, it's interesting that you were talking about the cycle that we're in because what happens is, is yes, we all know how to exercise when we choose to do it. We all know, you know, high level of what we should eat and what we shouldn't eat. However, if you think of weight loss and weight management as a pyramid, the foundation are really the attitudes and the values that we bring. And then on top of it are the coping skills that we need to learn to have a relationship with food, and then it's exercise, and then it's nutrition. And so while exercise and nutrition are extremely important, if we don't have a solid foundation of the healthy attitudes and values that we need, our platform is gonna fall down like a house of cards, which is why I think so many people struggle, is because they don't have the mindset. And part of that mindset is the sabotage syndrome. And sabotage by definition means destroy. And think about how many of us really begin with the high hopes of succeeding on a weight loss program only to destroy our own efforts. Or there's a, a part that's also called assisted sabotage where our loved ones or friends or family attempt to sabotage or destroy our efforts as well. And so it's really important to learn how am I sabotaging myself? How are others sabotaging me? And what do I need to do to reverse that and to have a healthier relationship and to help myself succeed rather than hurt myself? And also, a lot of people don't like change. It's intimidating and scary for them. So it's much easier to stay within your comfort zone. And as you start to see some of that change take place, that might be really threatening and intimidating to people, even if it's a positive change, because they're more comfortable with the familiar. So they need to learn to work through those things so that they can break through that comfort zone and experience an even better life. What is food grief and how can we cope with it? Mm -hmm. So food grief is real. 
Um, it's basically the loss of the way food played in our life, the way it once played. So once we start to change our behaviors and our relationship with food, there's a sadness, there's a grieving that happens. And it's similar to that of losing a loved one, a pet, a trauma. And it's real. And um, it's very parallel to a trauma model uh, that was developed by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. And the first stage is denial. So you go on a program like Red Mountain, you're all excited and you think, oh, it's no big deal. I'm going to give up my Starbucks. I don't need to go out to eat. And then the next thing you know, life sets in and then you're no longer in denial and you're bumped out. And then you become angry and you say, well, why do I have to do this? Nobody else has to. It's not fair. And it's kind of like having a little tantrum. But if you allow yourself to move through it, you, you uh, come to the next stage, which is bargaining. And then you start to play games. We've all been on that program where you're like, well, you know, maybe if I just have one cheat day, or maybe if I just have one cookie, I won't eat the entire sleeve, or one potato chip, and then you don't eat the bag. And then we realize that that's just not happening. And then we revert back to our old behaviors. But we don't have to go all the way back. If we continue to progress, then we could move through the sadness, which is the next stage. And then we become sad that we can't use food the way we used to. But then we begin to realize that we start to feel better. There are benefits to the way we're now living. We can still have pleasure, even if it doesn't involve food 90% of the time. And then we come to acceptance. And acceptance never equals approval. We never have to like that we don't eat the whole bag of something again. We never have to approve that we have to live this way. But it's something that we have to do in order to be successful, both short-term and long-term. I want to paint the picture. We're talking about the, the, you know, why is it so hard to lose weight? Let's talk a little bit about the stages of weight loss. So we're sitting right now, and Dr. Benz, you've been, you've been working so hard for 30 years in this field. We're sitting in one of your beautiful offices in Scottsdale, Arizona. You're now expanding, though, to other places across the country uh, because what you do works and you have proven results. Take me through the stages of, of weight loss. I mean, if I walk in that door and I've been in a rut and I know I'm overweight and I'm in a bad cycle, but I want to change, what are the stages I might expect? So first and foremost, you're going to meet with one of our medical professionals and we're gonna get a health history, a behavior history, and we're gonna figure out what your particular barriers are. And then we'll choose a program that's individualized to you and your lifestyle. But all of our programs consist of three phases. So the first phase is the active weight loss phase. That's the phase where we're really gonna focus on strategic results, getting you results. You know, 50% of women at any one time are on a diet. And so they live in this suspended weight loss phase, but they're not really getting results. So you'll hear women say that all the time, I'm on a diet all the time but they're not getting results. So our active weight loss phase is to produce results. And once you transition from the active weight loss phase, we get you out of that and we move into a transition. The transition phase is when we slowly reintroduce foods to you that you like and we bring your calorie level up. And then finally you graduate to the lifetime maintenance phase. And this is where we teach you how to maintain your weight loss over time. Then you can begin to add back some of the foods that you like. You can certainly enjoy things that you love. You just can't eat them in unlimited quantities and you can't eat them all in the same day. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna teach you how to do that. And then we also um, really think that exercise is a really important thing to add to the lifestyle plan as well. So for the diet portion of it, is it calorie restriction or what does that look like? And how do you determine a win for someone? Is it, is it you're measuring their body fat? Do they tell you, I want to lose this much weight? How do you gauge that? Once again, all of our programs are individualized. We have patients that come in who've been struggling with the same 10 pounds for years. And for them, that's really important to them. We also have patients that struggle with over 100 pounds, patients that maybe were anticipating gastric bypass surgery. So we're going to find out the program that meets their needs and what their goals are. We're not going to give them a goal, we're gonna help them together come up with that goal. And then we plan out an individualized program to get them the results that they want. Can you ladies talk a little bit, since you both have so much experience in this field, I, I think it would be helpful for the audience to know where you have seen people be successful. 
Well, we know that when patients use a physician-supervised program, they lose five times more weight than patients that don't. So we have all the tools to help them. Not only do we have specialized diets, we have nutritional supplements, we have prescription patented medications that control hunger and cravings. They activate the satiety center in your brain that tells you, I'm full, I'm not hungry, I'm not accessing about food. So all these tools are really helpful. And then of course we have behavioral modification. We have our behavioral therapists that can help you with the behaviors that surround why you're not able to lose weight. What percentage of importance is the psychological part? Well, I, I mean, <laughs> I would say it's equally, you know, to the nutrition and the exercise, which is why so many people are unsuccessful, because with this program, not only are we focusing on the nutrition and the individualized plan, but you're also going to have resources available to you that can help you change your mindset, that can help to change the way you think, your attitudes and values that you bring to the weight loss creating new guidelines for living so that you can be successful not only while you're on the program, but long-term. That's the goal here is to really ensure long-term success. We want this to be your last time. We, we all have gone through it both personally and prof professionally where we know how hard it is to both lose weight and keep it off. So we walk the walk and we wanna provide that hope and possibility to other people who are experiencing it. And that's why it's also so important for us that our offices are judgment-free zones and that we have a team here that's very passionate what does about that mean? cheering kind on of patients. I, mean, I, I, know it's, I know what it sure. means, but tell me what it really means to you. Well, you know, what it means is that we realize it's a struggle. So when somebody is having a struggle, I don't want them to feel uncomfortable coming into the office because they won't and they'll give up and they'll lose that hope and they'll think they failed at one more thing. But when we can provide a welcoming environment for them wherever they are at their stage or their step of the program and they know they can come back, that's a big step for them to be able to be vulnerable with us. Weight loss is a very vulnerable, or weight is a very vulnerable issue for patients. So we need to be welcoming of that and be very approachable so that they can allow us into their circle, feel comfortable with us, regardless of whether or not they're having a good day or a bad day and get back on track. What is it like for you all to see someone when they really start to turn the corner? when they really start to lose weight and feel healthier. It makes coming to work every day a complete and total joy. When you see people that initially came in and maybe they had their head down and they felt ashamed, they didn't feel good about themselves and, and slowly every week you see them coming in and you celebrate those victories with them and in a few months it's like somebody that you didn't even know. I mean you see the light in their eyes, the quickness in their step and it's probably the most rewarding thing that uh, just truly makes working at Red Mountain Weight Loss and a real joy. The light in their eyes, I love that. And seeing people find their confidence mm -hmm. is something so beautiful. So I would ask as we, as we wrap up this segment, could each of you just, just tell me when we ask the question, why is it so hard to lose weight? What words of inspiration do you have for all those folks who say this is just too hard? I've tried it, I've tried it it is too hard. What do you say to them? The first thing I want to say is that I understand and that we all understand here and that we've been it through it. We walk the walk 80% of the time ourselves and that just because you haven't been able to do it in the past doesn't mean it's not possible. That there's a way, it's here, and we're all here to be able to help you be where we're at now because we understand. And Dr. Coker? I would say don't lose hope. Take the first step to uh, bring on a partner, somebody to partner with you, like us, and we'll help, help hold you accountable and we'll encourage you along the way. And imagine your surroundings is important too. Absolutely. You know, when Absolutely. you talk about that encouragement. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and it's, I, I always love seeing people come, uh, um, you know, husband and wives, partners, um, sisters coming into the office together to lose weight because they just, they have more fun with it. They're gonna help hold each other accountable. Um, they cheer each other on every day because we can't be with them every day. Dr. Benz? 
What would you leave people with? You know, I would say there's a lot of competing voices. There's a lot of noise out there. And what we do is we quiet the noise and we help patients with effective programs that we know work. We've helped over 250,000 people reach their goals and lose weight. So don't struggle on your own. Come in and let us help you. You know, that's actually a great place to leave it. I, I think that that's something people could really digest is quiet the noise. Think about what it is that you want for yourself and then put a plan in action mm -hmm. to make your life better. That's because there is so much noise and that can cause us a lot of frenetic activity that prevents us to, from being who we want to be. Thank you all so very much and thanks to all of you for watching. You can find out more information at redmountainweightloss.com. I'm Carrie Pena. Take good care.